to Robert Reed here with us today. Robert, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. So some of what I'm going to share with you today can help you compete for the job that you would like to get. And that's, I think, some of the inspiration you receive from your leadership here is how to apply for a job. Because it really isn't an application, it's a competition. There are a lot of graduates. There are salon environments are changing where in years past, salons engaged stylists or they hired stylists on commission or salary or hourly wages. This has really evolved into a bad direction in my professional opinion to where everybody wants to rent you a chair. To me, that's not your best path. Because you, especially early on in your career, you want to be associated with other learners, people who are inspired. The right type of environment that's going to allow you to refine your skills through serving a lot of customers, and at the same time, providing you with ongoing advanced education. And you simply will not receive that in a booth rental or independent contractor environment because everybody is on their own, fearful about sharing because they're fearful of the competition. So as you begin to prepare, seeking your first place of employment, it would behoove you to be ready for that. And a part of that is the skills you've already accumulated. I'd like to think part of it will be having your certificate for the strategy of a blow dry, because as you build your book of looks, it'll also be helpful to have your book of accomplishments and courses that you take. So today, serving guests, which is another word for customers, is about serving their needs in such a way that it serves this customer to really place their faith in you and to speak about you all the time. So we like to say that one of the reasons why our Art of the Blow Dry classes are so popular today is styles are looking to impress their guests with the finish. But I'm not certain we've ever spoken about the different type of dialogue you can have with the customers that you begin to accumulate. Because, you know, in the course of your career, you will have thousands of new guests. And we're always inviting new guests to visit us. And then we lose a guest because they move out of the area. Or we lose a guest to a competitive stylist who offers something new and fresh. Or we lose them for a variety of other reasons. But you want to do your best to retain each guest for years and see the results of how what you've done has changed the way your guest feels about themselves. There are certain things that successful people do that allow them to attract customers or guests and keep them and build and eventually start to shuffle out the ones that aren't so pleasing to them, allowing you the choice of the type of guest that you serve. So some of the dialogue is based upon this basic understanding we've been sharing all over the country. To be successful, you have to recognize it's what your guest doesn't know about how to care for their hair that will come back to life. Who here loves color? The number one cause of color fadage is a blow dryer. You know, most blow dryers today, the ones that a guest would use, are far too hot. And the way that you blow dry one of your guests' hair and the way they blow dry their hair is actually totally different. Because when you have a guest in the chair, you're using a blow dryer above them and always with the nozzle and the airflow going off scalp, right? But when you blow dry your own hair, isn't it true? The nozzle's always directed at your hair. So if a dryer is too hot, it opens up the cuticle and allows a degradation of the color. And most guests don't know this. But if you have a guest who receives color from you and the color fades, 
who do you think they blame? You. So, it would behoove you to guide your guests in understanding how to use a dryer. When you walk down the street and you see a woman and her hair has a lot of breakage, split ends, 100% of the time that is directly related to how she doesn't understand when and how to use a brush. If you provide keratin type treatments or just a great haircut with a great smooth finish and your guest beats it up because she doesn't know how to detangle her hair or she uses a brush and heat and tension too quickly when her hair is too fragile, she's going to come back and she's going to think it was you. So successful stylists have taught me over this last year, or maybe they've been teaching me for years and I didn't hear it, that there are successful things, there are successful dialogues they have with their guests. So salons and salon visits are a social experience, right? Kind of a fun place where men and women go to hang out, feel comfortable, and receive a new look, catch up a little bit in the chit chat, find out from you the most popular places, restaurants, movies, <clears throat> maybe where you've gone shopping. They're really intrigued by you. So as you begin to apply for a job, compete for a job, one of the first things the salon owner is going to ask you is to do a shampoo and a blow dry. I think part of this is because they're looking for inexpensive help. Because blow drying is so physically challenging. And they'd like someone to take some of the labor <laughs> off of their hands. But at the same time, they want to understand how you can impress one of your guests. Here's the way I envision it for you. And you can shape this the way you wish. But when you apply or compete for a job, number one, you need to be wearing your best hair. You need to be looking like you just received the best services. Because that's a direct reflection of the type of work that you're going to provide for the guests. Best makeup, best clothes, best hair, best nails. You want to look the part of the professional. Number two, you want to be organized. Organized would mean if you have a resume, and your resume may not be very deep, but it could include ticket stubs of classes you've attended, it could include the diplomas or certificates of classes you've, you've participated in, all in a little book. It could be a little look book that you've created, that these are the types of looks that either I like or I've done in your own little organized folder. Having a carry bag, however it might look, with all of your tools organized inside of it. So when you go to compete for the job and they ask you to do a shampoo and a blow dry, you lay out all of your tools in a nice organized manner. Salon owners really do appreciate clean working stations, so this is a good sign for them to see. All of your ergo brushes, maybe on your ergo pot mat, have your irons laid out to bring in a model. At some point you're going to be sectioning them off with your clips and your sections and partings nice and clean and begin to have a dialogue with your model. And that dialogue could begin with, has any stylist ever shared with you how to use a blow dryer? <laughs> blow dryers are the number one cause for color fadage. So today I'm going to share with you how to use a blow dryer on a lower heat but more airflow to make your hair color last longer. That's one of the key questions. Has any stylist ever shared with you how to use a blow dryer? If you ask any of your guests that today or tomorrow, I promise you that they're going to look up back at you and they're going to say, no. And that's your first opportunity to present yourself as a professional better than they've ever visited before. You know, you want to be the source of knowledge in the professional. Number two question would be, has any stylist ever shared with you when and how to use a brush? Because we learned in college that when you walk down the street and you see a woman with a lot of breakage or split ends, 100% of the time that's related 
to when and how she uses her brush. So today I'm going to share with you how to know when your hair is strong enough to place your brush in. Because hair is very fragile when it's overly wet. And third question could be, as you proceed toward your finish, has any stylist ever shared with you how to use a flat iron? Used it too high of a heat, too rapidly. And heat can't penetrate fully when you work rapidly through the hair. So today I'm going to share with you how to use an iron at a lower temperature, more deliberately, so the heat can penetrate. You'll actually do your hair more rapidly, and it won't get crunchy. And then, fourth question, has any stylist ever shared with you how to apply product to your hair? And in each of the three questions, your guest is going to say, no, no one's ever shown me that. Especially, as you think in your career, would it help you to understand why some customers purchase and others don't? Do you think that would help you? Maybe you don't know yet, but yes, it's going to help you. Because a guest who doesn't use product in their hair, your work is not going to reflect your intentions or your skills. Number two, if they don't use the right type of product, they can destroy your work, so your work is not going to be the walking billboard that you want on the street. And thirdly, there are all sorts of studies that demonstrate if a guest purchases one product, they have a certain level of allegiance to the stylist. If they purchase two products, like a shampoo and a finishing product, the allegiance grows. They're less likely to leave you. And if they purchase three or more products, they're pretty well locked in. You never own them, but they're pretty locked in to you because you've obviously given them some good guidance. So it is critical when you're competing for a job to be able to ask those four questions and guide that guest during that demonstration to the right understanding. And if you do, I make you this personal promise, you are going to win that job. So in short, when you lead your guests through these four questions, these are the service characteristics that anybody would treasure hiring. If this is who you are, they're going to believe that you're going to be a great contribution to their team. And that's how salon owners decide who they're going to invest in because if they hire you on an hourly basis or a commission basis and there are possibly some benefits and there's some educational uh, plans for that salon, it is an investment they make in you. So they're going to be looking at who's the best investment. And that, frankly, is how I've selected everybody on our team from this school. Well, it happened to be first, Cantrell Mitchell Jr., and then Anna Morales, and then Carlos Ramos. And then, although she graduated earlier, I discovered, uh, I was introduced and discovered Leslie Rodriguez, a very smart woman and super organized. So, these are some of the characteristics that will help you win your job. Here are those four questions. Has any stylist ever shared with you how to use a blow dryer? And the key point below that is blow dryers are the number one cause for color favorage. Number two, has any stylist ever shared with you when and how to use a brush? Because using a brush when your hair is too wet is the number one cause for breakage and split end. Question number three. Has any stylist ever shared with you how to use a flat iron or a curling iron? Because most irons are too hot, and when you use an iron that's too hot, it can damage your hair, so your hair cannot accept hair color or other treatments. And number four, has any stylist ever shared with you how to apply product? The three reasons why guests don't purchase incidentally are also very simple. Number one, 
regardless of whether they're the king of Dubai and have a lot of money, or a celebrity, or a barista at Starbucks. It is about the money. Because everyone in this room has too much of everything at home, probably two shampoos, three conditioners, four styling products. So everyone has plenty of products. We have to be able to show a difference. Number two reason, stylists become distracted during serving their guests. Music, movement, people tapping you on the back. We become distracted. We don't always have the dialogue that we ourselves would like to receive from a professional. What should I be doing about my hair? And number three is that guests are fearful of misusing a product. They're not paying attention to you. They, they are kind of in their own world when they're sitting in their chair, your chair. So they're not paying attention to how you're applying product. And has anyone here ever misused a product? I was at the Long Beach Hair Show, and one of my team used a product for the first time and used too much. And I was like a little grease head. <laughs> so guests are fearful. They're not paying attention. So they're fearful of not remembering what you did. Therefore, they'll wait until next time. So the three reasons. Reason number one is it's about the money. We have to create value. Number two is we have to make sure it's part of our process of having the dialogue. And three, we want to show them exactly how to do it to get the best results first. Can you repeat the reason why um, uh, flat irons, you said they're too hot? We may have mentioned in one of our earlier times together, you can make anything shiny with the right amount of heat and pressure. Uh, we can make your sweatshirt shiny by taking an iron and pressing it, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> it makes it shiny, but we can never make it unshiny. When you use heat and compression, which is what a <coughs> flat iron does, if you use too much heat, it fuses the cuticle, makes the hair appear shiny, but nothing can ever penetrate the hair again. This is the number one fear of hair color companies, flat irons. And we have a lot of flat iron junkies that sit in our chair. So we want to share with our guests how to use the lowest amount of heat, allow the heat to penetrate from top through the center to the bottom, and then use the tension to smooth the hair. Question is, is it possible if you use a flat iron that's too hot and you use compression, can it prevent the hair from accepting color? The answer is absolutely. I'm pleased to tell you it's an honor for me, but I serve as a resource to every major hair color company in the world in one manner or another. All the L'Oreal companies, uh, Wella, Goldwell, Schwarzkopf, and other companies. So I ask them questions and sometimes participate in their studies. Flat iron damage is the number one reason why hair color will be uneven. We sometimes have to ask the habits of our guests. The quality of your conversation is as important as the quality of your technical craft for your success. And especially as you're beginning to prepare for seeking your first job, I would like to extend this invitation. Our Facebook page, our Facebook page is Ergo, E-R-G-O, Research, Inc. I-N-C, all one word, Ergo Research, Inc. If you have questions of or would like to spend some private time in preparing for your first job competition, <coughs> you can leave a message there and I'd be pleased to contact you and provide every resource I have to help you win your first job. Let's begin by saying last year was an incredible learning year for me. I would hope this would be inspirational for you because after a long time in our industry. I still find that there's opportunities to find inspiration. You know, first you have to seek inspiration. You have to wonder and search for something that is going to take you to your next level of learning or understanding. Would you all pretty much agree with that? Sometimes we find it at our fingertips, other times we really have to go out and search for it. I think to summarize, 
that, we had a comment from a very experienced salon owner at the most recent ISSE show. That was the Long Beach show. When you go to a hair show or you attend a class, the real objective that you should have is to learn one new thing. That new thing can be an understanding or it could be a technique. And maybe to discover one tool that is going to allow you to accomplish something new. As I've met with thousands of hairdressers and asked them why they go to a hair show, the answers are pretty consistent. I think whether you're a freshman or whether you're a senior, it'd be pretty much the same. You want to see beautiful hair, right? And we want to be turned on with some eye candy. And of course at hair shows there's a lot of noise and sound and sometimes dancing. It doesn't have anything to do with hair. And then, of course, we hope to learn some new technique. A technique that will either allow us to accomplish something that we envision or that we've seen before and we don't quite yet understand. And then we want to understand the types of tools that we use because the tools allow the creativity, which I believe begins in the heart, it's translated to the mind, which tells the hands what to do. And the right types of tools allow your creativity to flow and become transparent upon the hair. So posted on our website that she went to the show expressly to learn one thing and discover one tool. And she found both of them in the classroom that was led by Cantrell Mitchell Jr., which was the introduction to the art of a blow dryer. So, uh, Long Beach Show was interesting. You'll discover as you become in involved in the industry that nothing great happens just by chance. And a show like the Long Beach Show requires hundreds of hours of strategic, so there's hundreds of hours of planning, logistics, hotels, making sure we have enough Altoids for everybody <laughs> because there's even the minor little preparations all factor to a successful show. And um, Jennifer, or pardon me, Stephanie, who made this comment said she found this in her classroom. So this is the first year that Ergo's presented a classroom and you have to submit a proposal to the Professional Beauty Association for your content and what you're going to be teaching, how long it's going to take, what the <coughs> takeaway is for each of your attendees, not taking away something physically, but what they're expected to learn and be able to grow from. And we were accepted, our proposal was accepted last September and we began planning. But we got one of the worst time slots you could imagine. Sunday, 10 o'clock, in an upstairs classroom. Because as you can imagine, there are that you've been to the show, there's thousands of people waiting in line. It takes a while to get in, everybody's nerve racked, and they immediately go onto the floor and start looking for deals. We began the class with about 25 <coughs> hairdressers. And about 15 minutes later, as Cantrell began, there were 15 people standing in the back. So I went to the classroom next door and I pulled 15 of these heavy chairs from one classroom to another. Came back, wiped my brow, Cantrell's going along doing his thing, and then I looked in the back of the room there's another 10 people. So I went and got 10 more chairs. By the time our 90 minute class was over, we had about 100 people packed in our room, including some great industry legends, legends of education such as Carlos Valenzuela, who's a leading educator, instructor, and platform artist. And people from the press, uh, there's a, a website called, uh, is it The Hair Nerds? Yeah. The Hair Nerds. So these are three young ladies who are really inspired by everything in the industry and they kind of stalk future talent and they were stalking Kendra. Um, of the 
approximately 100 people in our audience. In fact, exactly 23 of them came down to our exhibit and started participating hands-on. So that's really what the show's all about. And Stephanie said that she was very inspired. She learned some new techniques, understanding her, the basics of the most basic tool we use, which is a brush. And Cantrell will be presenting some education for them in uh, Monrovia, being hosted by another salon called Salon Zyro. Our education that you've been exposed to, the strategy of a blow dry, as you graduate, will evolve into the art of a blow dry with some refinements, some techniques. Our Facebook page is Ergo, E R G O Research Inc. I N C, all one word, Ergo Research Inc. If you have questions of, or would like to spend some private time in preparing for your first job competition, you can leave a message there and I'd be pleased to contact you and provide every resource I have to help you win your first job.